Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Email me for pricing, even if it's just to inquire. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a 2019 launch in homage to a series that bowed in 1962. This is the Tag Heuer Ottavia Caliber 5, Ottavia for Automotive and Aviation this watch has utility for both. It is a lovely and wearable 42 millimeter stainless steel chronometer that is 13.5 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip. If we're just measuring the case, 50.4 millimeters. If we measure end link to end link across the wrist, it's a broader 54.9 millimeters with a modern broad stanced 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now, most of these are sold with straps, so on the bracelet, it has a more imposing and premium look, but something you can't see, it also has a more robust feel. The watch now feels far more expensive. Part of that's weight, but also the solidity of the parts. Very little play in this bracelet. Taking a look on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it wears well. I really wouldn't recommend it on the bracelet for a wrist much smaller, because given that it is almost 55 millimeters end link to end link, it's broad across the wrist, and you can see those end links are out the edge of my wrist. You can see it from over the top, but you can also see it down the barrel. It's not a super thick watch. It will fit underneath most cuffs. It's just broad, so 16 centimeters circumference wrist and up if you wear it on the bracelet. Put it on the strap. Now we can talk about 14 centimeters circumference wrists. Taking a look at the bracelet. It's got a conforming end link to better mate it to the case, and then we have a little bit of a taper down from the end link to a clasp that is a thick gauge single fold deployant. We have the Tag Heuer Shield logo externally, twin trigger release, you do have to press both of them to open it up. Now taking a look at the removable links, you can see that they are fixed by pins and sleeves. So if you want to size this at home, you'll need a block and punch. It is a very robust system though, and you can see that there are quite a few removable links. We also have these half size or intermediate size links. They're not quite half. So if you're in between link sizes, you have those two intermediate links to avail yourself. The design features two planes. You can see the center links are actually higher than the shoulder links. Outer faces are polished. Center links feature polished facets, and then the remainder of them is satinated. And then you can see the shoulder links are polished outboard, and then across their tops, they're satinated. The case band features longitudinal satination and a vintage look with a squared off lug profile at all four corners. And then we have a little bit of a bevel with polish and satination on the lug hoods. We have a double knurled crown with the Tag Heuer Shield logo. It is a push down crown, but the watch is 100 meters water resistant. We have a black ceramic bezel insert for scratch resistance. Then this is a aviation and automotive style timing bezel. So bi-directional, it's not a dive bezel because it can turn in both directions, but it is a good timing reference. Listen, listen to its ratchet. It's actually a much higher quality of ratchet than I typically find on bi-directional bezels, which tend to have a very indistinct click. So let's see how many clicks it is right here. So let's go from one, two, three, four, five. There we go, 60 click bezel. And then we have a dial that has a satin finish with a fume fade. It's a sort of I would describe it as champagne to anthracite as it fades out from the center. If you look, the dial actually has excellent depth as we have a Rejo outboard with a slightly cantilevered, polished, and faceted individual hour indices. We also have printed hours on the dial, but if you look carefully, the detail is superb as the loom actually has a silver frosted border. So each of these printed numerals actually has two different elements that add visual depth and also an impression of greater overall quality. Hands at center are polished. We'll do a quick loom shot. Take a look at the watch in the dark. Easy to read. All three hands are loomed, so if you are in the dark, you know your watch is still running. We have an elaborate but solid case back. Automotive and aviation inspiration. You can see both the wheel and the propeller. And taking a quick look at this case back, it's important to note that inside we have what they call caliber 5. And caliper 5 is an ETA 2A242, so bidirectional automatic winding, 4 hertz beat rate, 38 hour power reserve. We have both a stop seconds function and a quick set date. 
five position adjustment and a COSC chronometer certification. So it is the highest grade of 2824, which is very durable, very accurate, and universally serviceable anywhere in the world. So reach out to me, tmasso, at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this Tag Heuer Autavia chronometer. Oh, hey, I'm back. One last quick note. I really need to be explicit about some things rather than implying them. A picture may be worth a thousand words, but just showing you this lug junction does a disservice. This is a quick release system that's integrated into the bracelet. You pull the quick release and it removes itself. Now, what you've got here is a standard spring bore and a 21 millimeter lug spacing. So any OEM or aftermarket strap that's a 21 will work here. This model also has quick release straps. So by integrating the quick release into the bracelet and the strap, you preserve a conventional lug junction to use normal straps while also giving you the convenience of a quick release system and it snaps right back in. Picture may be worth a thousand words, but sometimes you just have to run your mouth. This is a bit more clear.